Have you ever heard of BWRT? I am guessing if you've clicked on this video, you are either searching for what it is or just because you happen to know me and watch my videos, you've clicked on and now you're saying, what is BWRT? It stands for Brain Working Recursive Therapy. It was developed by a psychotherapist or therapist named Terence Watts. I will link to his video. I think it pops up here um, <clears throat> and in the description box below his video where he speaks about this therapy that he has created. He got the seed or the spark for it in 2011 when he was reading through something and then he taught it for the first time once he had developed it in 2013. So it's very, very new in terms of therapies. Seven years. So many of you would not have heard of it. Many of you would not have done it. But the link that I enjoyed to South Africa with hearing about the um, discovery of this therapy was that when he first taught it in 2013, there was a South African therapist who took it and sort of tested, tested it out um, in an institution where he worked. I will link his name here. And he found it to be very effective. So Terence Watts is saying that most therapists who use this therapy called brain working recursive therapy are finding it to be faster, more effective and really helpful for almost all traumas and disorders. So for example, post-traumatic stress disorder, binge eating, alcoholism, all anxieties, all phobias, anything you really want to change. It's amazing. So there's that therapy and I did a session. Therefore, I'm qualified to talk about it. I'm going to tell you my experience with it as a patient. I'm not a therapist, but I can tell you how the session went. It's really easy from a patient's point of view. You just, so obviously it deals with, and you recall one very traumatic memory to do with the issue that you are dealing with. I'm not going to tell you my memory and my issue because, you know, boundaries, but you recall. So if, as an example, let's say you were sexually abused as a child. You recall the most painful memory to do with that, um, to do with your sexual abuse and the trauma. You recall it, but you are not required in the session to give details of the memory. So they're finding that it's more effective um, and less traumatic for the patient. You get talk therapy where you talk things through and you work through all the pain and the trauma. But a lot of therapists find that that's very emotional for patients. This does not require that. So for example, let's say you, you're in the room and like with me, you sit there, your eyes closed, you recall that painful traumatic memory in as vivid detail as possible, feeling all the feelings. She brings you up to a scale of like eight, nine or 10 in intense emotions. And um, yeah, you feel it, then you create a snapshot in your mind's eye of the pinnacle moment of that traumatic memory. Then, now, as a patient, you are required to have a fairly good imagination. That would probably be the hardest part. And then you jump to a better ending or outcome to that traumatic memory. Now you're creating this in your mind. It hasn't really happened. So you're creating a better memory in your mind or outcome of that um, traumatic memory. So for example, if it was a sexual abuse memory, it might be that you imagine the perpetrator deeply, deeply apologetic, or you've confronted them and that went really well, something along those lines, or you managed to get away or something like that. Then you use your imagination again as the patient and you jump fast forward to the future and you create what they call a future memory. It's obviously not a memory, but it's you're creating this in your mind. A future sort of snapshot of you living, achieving and being so fulfilled where that past trauma is no longer affecting you at all. So you would be feeling 
feelings that you'd want to feel reacting in ways you would want to react and you create a memory that you couldn't have before without that um without this sort of therapy happening i guess so basically you're creating a memory where you're not dealing or living with this trauma you're not reacting or responding so it's your sort of best future memory and then they sort of talk you through and you loop through it faster and faster in your mind's eye as the therapist talks you through. I'm not going to give away all of it, but as a patient, it is super, super easy. You literally just relax, lie down or sit down or whatever the therapist gets you to do with your eyes closed and you use your mind's eye. That's it. You as a patient do not have to talk at all. You just nod your head to the therapist. The therapist does all the work. They talk you through the process and from what I read, that's all it takes. For me personally, with my memory, I can feel that it has taken that emotional charge away from the memory and it's given me the feeling that the thing that happened just happened. Like, so what? It happened and it's not going to affect or impact my future self. I can now move on in my life and react and respond in healthy ways so there we go i would definitely say if you are considering doing it do it do it you've got nothing to lose it's really easy to have it done to you it's not weird it's not woo woo that's another advantage that terence watts says about this therapy people don't some people are anti-hypnotherapy because they do not like the idea of being hypnotized a lot of people also find talk therapy draining and emotional and this has all the advantages and none of the drawbacks so there you have it bwrt so i guess in a nutshell how it works is that it rewires your brain it creates a new neural pathway through cycling through the trauma the better memory and your best future memory it just creates a new pathway and you're obviously using your vivid imagination. And what I lo loved about it was that I'm big into vis visualization and using the power of your mind to create your future or to create your life. So it made a lot of sense to me because our minds, our subconscious, as they, as they all say, can't tell the difference between what is real and what is imagined. And now you're linking what has happened to what your future, what could happen. And it's, it's just creating a new neural pathway where you don't have to respond in the old conditioned negative way. So now you've created a new neural pathway to rewire your brain through the use of your imagination. But it's powerful and it's easy. So go for it.